The facts are both terrifying and mind-numbing. Three weeks ago, a gunman opened fire on black shoppers at a Buffalo supermarket. Since then, there have been more than 35 mass shootings in America, the latest overnight in Philadelphia, where several active shooters unleashed a barrage on a crowd in South Street, killing at least three, injuring almost a dozen others. There's been a mass shooting every single week this year, more than 8,000 killed by guns in five months. ABC News is going to cover this issue from every, every single day, analyzing from all angles the rise in mass shootings, firearm murders, and suicide by young people, the role of social media in mental illness, and what can be done to address this deadly epidemic. Congressional correspondent Rachel Scott starts us off this morning on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning. After another string of mass shootings in the U.S., President Biden called on Congress to meet the moment, asking if this time would finally be enough to change the political landscape here in Washington and break through decades of gridlock. Hours after yet another mass shooting, this time in Tulsa, President Biden made an urgent plea for sweeping gun reform, asking the nation, how much more carnage are we willing to accept? We need to ban assault weapons in high capacity magazines. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. The president delivered a rare primetime address as the U.S. surpasses more than 230 mass shootings this year. I want to be very clear. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about protecting whole communities. It's about protecting our freedom to go to school to a grocery store, to a church, without being shot and killed. But despite his impassioned pleas for change, the political reality is most of President Biden's demands are a long shot on Capitol Hill. Sources say what's on the table in the Senate's bipartisan talks is much narrower than what the president is hoping for, including expanded background checks, incentives for states to implement red flag laws, which would allow guns to be temporarily taken away from people considered to be dangerous, and funding for mental health and strengthening school security. Polls show the majority of Americans do support most of these measures, but on Capitol Hill, the partisan divide is sharp and bitter. The debate at a House hearing on gun reform getting heated. You know who didn't have their constitutional right to life respected? The kids at Parkland and Sandy Hook and Uvalde and Buffalo. So spare me the bullshit about the, constitutional rights. Republicans pushing back. We must be here for the gunman is an outrage. How dare you? You think we don't have hearts? The House Judiciary Committee advanced a bill that includes nearly everything the president asked for. It doesn't stand a chance in the Senate where Democrats need the support of at least 10 Republicans to get it passed. And while calls for change are growing louder, Don't shoot! I want to grow up! So is the backlash for Republicans who break from their party. GOP Congressman Chris Jacobs represents Buffalo. Days after the mass shooting there, he called for a ban on assault weapons. The blowback was swift. Faced with intense scrutiny from fellow Republicans, Jacobs announced he will no longer run for re-election. If you're not going to take a stand on something like this, I don't know what you're going to take a stand on. Across the country, some states are not waiting for Congress to act. In New York, lawmakers passed legislation this week to revise its red flag laws and raise the age to buy a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21, as the nation continues to mourn the lives lost too soon. The funerals of two of the 21 Uvalde victims taking place today. 10-year-old Alithia Ramirez and Ellie Garcia, who would have turned 10 yesterday. The president asking if this time will be any different. For God's sake, do something. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time, that can't be true. This is shaping up to be a critical week here on Capitol Hill. Families of the victims of the Buffalo and Uvalde mass shootings will be testifying before Congress. And so will a fourth grader who said that she covered herself in her classmates' blood and played dead when the suspect entered her classroom in Uvalde. As for those bipartisan talks, senators are under pressure to reach a deal this week. George, I'm told that is a goal, not a guarantee. Okay, Rachel, thanks very much. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.